Welcome to the Coach's Corner. I'm Pat Farbaugh, and it is my pleasure to welcome into the first edition of this segment, uh, the eighth, finished his eighth year as the head coach of the Red Flash men's basketball program and led the team to 22 wins in 2019-20, the most since the 90-91 season, and that is men's basketball coach Rob Krimmel. Rob, how are you doing? I'm doing just fine. It's great to see you, Pat. Good to see you. Let's get the tough questions out of the way first. We spoke last night. Last night was Aileen's birthday. Uh, how did things go? Did you step up and deliver uh, on that front? I was a team effort. You know, I, I did my part yesterday to keep you know my kids and you know, the their friends out of her hair so she could just relax and put her feet up. Uh, her her request was that she didn't have to make any food all day and that she wanted Mexican for dinner. So I, I, I accomplished all of that. And through a team effort, uh, some of our friends drove through the neighborhood last night honking their horns and uh, wishing her a happy birthday. So there was a little bit of a birthday parade. She didn't have to make any food. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, was, I was able to uh, keep the kids out of her hair so she could relax a little bit. So I think I, I, think I got two thumbs up. All right. And you're also uh, donning the hat of instructor of late. Are Tommy and Alex learning anything uh, during this quarantine period uh, by, I guess it's a, it's a dual effort, but by one of their teachers, namely you? Uh, we'll find out when they get to third and fifth grade. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm having a blast. You know, I, part of my degree was in education. And, um, you know, it's been a lot of fun to, to, to be around the boys and, and help them with their studies and, and see them, uh, see some of their interests come out. And, uh, you know, I've, I had to brush up on some of my fourth grade skills and you know, make sure that I understood the English and the grammar. Although I should have called you, Pat. I should have had you on a lifeline to work on some of my proofreading and some of the, uh, the verb phrases and, and, and part of the stuff that I had to brush up on. But I'm having a blast doing it. And, uh, you know, th through the circumstance that we're all in, we're making the best of it. And I'm, I'm a gym teacher. I'm an English teacher. I'm a science teacher. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a lunch person. You know, so we're having a lot of fun, wearing a lot of hats. And uh, so far, the kids haven't kicked me out. Rob, I have a handful of questions for you. Can you talk about uh, trying to run a program, a Division I men's basketball program under? There's a lot going on. We're not going to get to everything. We got the, uh, the, the issues with the NCAA in terms of uh, image, likeness, uh, opportunities, uh, transfer. We're not going to get into uh, some of that. Uh, that'll be for down the road. But can you talk about running a program during this quarantine period, the kinds of challenges that it has presented for you and your staff and, and how you've addressed those challenges? You know, I think the, the first and first and foremost, the staff has been fantastic. Uh, we're they're they're reaching out. I promise you, there's not two consecutive days that go by that our guys aren't reaching out to the players and making sure that they're okay. Not only in the classroom, but that they're they're hanging in there and 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 finding ways to uh, manage during during these times. You know, a lot of these guys are taking online or were taking online classes already, and so the transition wasn't as uh, wasn't as difficult. But each kid goes back to a different situation, and uh, you know sometimes there are different distractions that they might not have in uh, at school. And obviously, one of the outlets that they have when they're at school is the ability to work out and and the ability to whether it be going to the weight room or, or get into the gym to get some shots. And you know, most of our kids are from the Northeast, and 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 it's it's been a challenge for them to get out and, and get workouts in. And, and as a coaching staff, that's the that's the one thing right now that. Um, you know, we'd be able to do that we're not right now. Um, and and the, the academic component, our guys, our communication, we're actually communicating a little bit more now, Pat, than we probably would have if we were on campus. Um, and, and not that we don't communicate with our guys on a regular basis, but I mean, there's some times where, you know, 20 or 30 text messages are being exchanged, you know, we're doing Zoom calls. And, you know, so the the communication, it's been an opportunity for us to do some different things, you know, on top of the recruiting that we continue to need to do. And I think as a staff, we've really embraced the, 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 the challenges of, of, of what's in front of us and you know, tried to just be a little bit better when we come out of it and, and we return to whatever that new normal is. But, you know, it's been um, it's so far so good. You know, the thing in the period I worry about is that next period. Pat. Right now, the kids are in finals and they have classes and they know that, hey, listen, this is coming up. This is coming up that next step of, hey, when are we coming back to campus? When can we work out again? When are the gyms going to open up? There's still a lot of unknowns that you, know, that you have to go through. But you know, our staff has been fantastic, Pat. And you know, the communication has been key. And our guys are doing a great job. Sarah Ross has been 
awesome, our academic coordinator, of reaching out to our guys and helping them overcome some hurdles. And, and the professors, you know, your colleagues, Pat, have been nothing short of fantastic. You know, helping our guys you know, navigate internet issues or, you know, maybe not, you know, seeing something on a syllabus or an assignment that they missed or, you know, even something, a challenge that they might face relative to, you know, not understanding something. You know, it, it, this has really been a team effort. And St. Francis is, is known for that, really. And in this situation, everybody has stepped up and you know, our coaches, the professors, you know, our support team and made it as easy as possible for our student athletes. And I'm speaking strictly for the basketball team, but it's been a, uh, uh, a very challenging, but I think at the same time, a very eye-opening experience as we learn to communicate in a different way, Pat. All right, so March, we're recording this on May 1st. We played in the Northeast Conference Championship game back on March 9th. Uh, it seems like an eternity ago, but about 50 days ago. Uh, but with this, uh, you know, with this quarantine, uh, and even if it hadn't happened, you have, you've had a chunk of time to reflect. 22 wins. It's the third uh, most in program history. You got to go back uh, three decades ago uh, to Isolino and Anderson squad uh, for a team that achieved 22 wins. Rob, uh, from your vantage point, uh, what's been going through your mind as you think back on, you know, a really special season? The first thing that comes to mind are the five seniors, Pat. You know, DK, Scott, Isaiah, Keith, and Randall. And, you know, what they did, uh, you know, raise the bar and, and, and really put us in a position, you know, a year removed from, you know, losing three really good seniors in Andre and Jamal and Luigi. But to be able to come back and have the year that they had and, and Isaiah to be the player of the year and, and, and Keith to be first, comp, first team all conference and the first player in league history to go for 2,000 and 1,000. But more importantly, five seniors in today's, we talked about today's college basketball, for them to stick with an institution for five years is a credit to those kids. You, you see it all over the news, the transfers, you know, kids coming to a school for a year or two and then moving on. But for that group of guys to stick together is really a credit, to, you know, to those guys. And, you know, and they set an example of, hey, listen, if you stick with it, there's going to be some tough times. There, there's, there's, that's, that's part of it. But if you stick together and, and, and you believe in each other and you believe in the university and you believe in the program, good things can happen. And uh, so th those, are, those are the things that I would like to reflect on because, Pat, in, in a couple of days here, we'd be looking at my favorite day of the year, and that's graduation. And, and, and those five guys moving on. and and take whatever challenge is next. Unfortunately, we're not going to have that great day and that great moment uh, when we normally do. And, you know, that's, you know, that, that, that's, you know, sad. I know for a lot of the parents and, and just for closure and a sense of accomplishment, but those five seniors were, were awesome, great people, great to be around. And, and certainly they're going to be missed, but to win 22 games, to play in the championship game again, and, you know, the, the awards, and the individual accolades, it's uh you know, it's, it was a fun group to be around. And again, a, a lot of credit goes to the, to the staff and being able to recruit those kids and develop those kids. And they set the bar high. And now it's going to be up to that next group to continue to raise that bar, Pat. Yeah, two mid-major All-Americans. I mean, back-to-back -back conference players of the year. So special. And, you know, Isaiah coming uh, off of the two torn ACLs. And then Keith, I mean, third points, rebounds, assists, steals, uh, 44 double-doubles. Uh, Two guys were really going to miss. Uh, you talk about the next group, and, and you and I talked a little last night uh, about important moments of the 1920 season. And, Rob, one of those was that home game late January against Central Connecticut State. Uh, and you had two of those guys that are going to be those senior leaders and Ramir Dixon Conover and Mark Flagg. We were down 21. Uh, it was not looking good. Uh, and uh, those two, those two uh, sort of waiting in the wings for their opportunity, they stepped up. Mark had 19 and 9, uh, and uh, Ramir, uh, the junior out of Newark, uh, went for 18. Uh, they gave us a glimpse of what we could see down the road. And that was a big game for us, Pat, in a lot of reasons. We were dealing with some injuries, some sickness. Um, you know, our bench was very short. And to be down 21 on your home court, is not a good feeling. And, and if not for Mark Flagg and Ramir Dixon Conover, we wouldn't, I don't think we'd be in the position that we were in at the end of the year to, to play in a championship game because that really got our guys, 
I think, turned around that, hey, listen, we got to do this thing together, right? And we had a close locker room, but we need some other people to step up. And sometimes the only way you can step up is through some crazy circumstances. We just ask our guys, be ready. Be ready when your number's called. And, you know, Mark had, had had a very up and down year to that point. And, and Ramir to the same, you know, just with, 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 with different reasons and different things. But for both of those guys, it was Mark's first start and, and Ramir to, to play the way he did. It gave us a great lift and I think gave us, you know, some confidence that, hey, listen, Isaiah and Keith were our go-to guys for, for the year. But those two guys, you know, for that game, put us on their back and, and, and carried us to a 21-point come-from-behind win. And now the challenge for those guys, they, they were playing behind Isaiah and Keith. Now the challenge for those two guys, Pat, is to do that consistently. You know, th their time is now as, as the two, two seniors that are coming back. And, you know, they've got to they've step up and they've got to be more consistent with their performance. They got to play like they did the last, you know, month of the season. And if we do that, we'll be able to take another step as a program. But I was proud of the way those two kids responded. And you know, a kid like AJ Labriola, who who was a walk on for us, he was he was a part of the rotation for for those two games, you know, for for the central and then into the Bryant. And again, a great example, guys, if you you know you work hard, AJ is a great way. He's a great kid, a hard worker on and off the court and is a great representative of our program. And and for him to come in and he played you know, a few minutes, you know, in the first half, and I think a few minutes in the second half that just gave those guards a breather so that they could finish the game strong. And uh, it was, it was, it was a neat game to be a part of. I certainly don't like being down 21, but, but Mark and Ramirez were big time in that game for us. You didn't look like you liked being down 21 after they hit that three right before the buzzer. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, you know, those moments uh, are, uh, you know, I'm glad, I don't know if JD caught a picture of my face, but I'm sure I wasn't very happy. And, uh, you know, I, I did pick up my second technical foul of, uh, of my career in that game. And, oh, it was that night, uh, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it was. Yeah. And it was very intentional at that point. I needed something to, to, to wake these guys up. And, and, uh, you know, uh, again, I was very respectful and, 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 you know, just tried to, um, articulate a point on a call that I thought was, um, you know, should have gone our way and, and, and just, you know, something to try to get our guys going. And I, I don't like to do that in eight years to have two of them, I guess, you know, that's, that's a pretty good ratio, but uh, it, it, was a, it was a fun night to be a part of at the very end. <laughs> yeah, agreed. You got some work to do, I guess, to round out the academic year with, uh, with the Cribble boys yet. Yeah, we still, we still have a couple, uh, a couple weeks left, and, and uh, you know, it, it's, uh, their school year is going to be finished in, in, our, in our dining room. So uh, I'm looking forward to, you know, obviously getting back to, to campus and seeing you, Pat, and, and, and trying to figure out how we can be successful out of, uh, you know, what is going to be that new normal, both as, a, as an athletic department, as a, as a university. And I think there's going to, going to be some great opportunities for growth, not just for our basketball team, but for the university led by Father Malachi. And, and uh, you know, I'm looking forward to, to what's next. Uh, but I am enjoying the time with my, my boys and my family. We've had so many family dinners. I mean, we're, the, Aileen and I are trying to come up with new ideas for what to eat uh, every night. But I'm you know, certainly looking forward to, to seeing you, Pat. Really appreciate you having me on today. Yeah, it's good to see you on Zoom, Rob. It'll be better to see you up on the mountain soon. I want to thank our fans for tuning in. Again, uh, we're hoping to get uh, more opportunities uh, through uh, these sessions to pick the brains of our coaches and keep you updated on what's going on in Red Flash Athletics. So for Rob Crimble, this is Pat Farwell. We will see you next time here on the Coach's Corner.